College Football National Championship Preview brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Uh, are we going to make gambling picks on this? I mean, yeah. we, we can kind of give a lean at least, or, or if we feel strong about it, we'll just go and give it right now. Uh, Alabama, Clemson, 14-0 each. Both are 8-6 and six against the spread. Clemson covered against Notre Dame. Alabama did not cover the 14 against Oklahoma. Opening line is 6, and that's pretty much everywhere. I mean, that's every every odd that you can find, every book, everywhere. It's got Alabama minus six. I got it at six um, and a half yesterday. Uh, that's it, Wait, was it yesterday? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's, okay. That's when I saw it. That's when I made it. As of uh, as of today, it is six. We are recording this on, on New Monday, Year's New Eve. Year's Eve. Uh, so we're, we're getting our partying done early. <laughs> it's still six and a half at my bookie. Okay. So, that, so my bookie's got six and a half. Uh, all of the... MGM and Caesars and all that, they've all got it at six. Uh, I think Bet Online has it at six. I don't know. It, so everywhere on, on Vegas Insider, it is six across the board on there. And so uh, the odds actually came out at halftime of the Orange Bowl, and it had, the Westgate Superbook had it at six and a half early, and then by the end of the game, it was down to six. Interesting stat. Okay. Alabama and Clemson are 106 and four in games not against each other the last four seasons. Okay. Is that ridiculous? Speaks to the world of college football. You and I went back and forth about this. I, I think that this is incredibly impressive. I, I do not. And you you don't. I do not. I think I think I, I said it before the season started that college football is going the way of the NBA. And I think it's worse than the NBA. Oh, as far as uh, it's predictable. It's the most predictable. It is the same teams, and all the rules are set to benefit the same teams over and over and yeah, over Yeah, the richest of the rich. That's right. Um, if, if you are an elite, you will stay an elite. And if you are not an elite, there is no breaking through. There's no chance. Uh, Bill Conley from SB Nation actually talked about this a little bit. He said this is the chalkiest year uh, the, the 2010s are setting up to be the chalkiest decade that there has been since, like, the 70s. I, if you're a fan of Alabama, you're a fan of Clemson, it's just like all the people that are Golden State Warrior fans. Like, that's great for you. It's not good for the rest of the There's sport. 130 schools out there. About five of them have a chance to win the national championship every year. Yeah. Outside of those five, you're just – Playing a bunch of exhibition games. Yeah, and you're, you're gonna trying have to, to win Alabama like, or Clemson. You're trying there. to win rivalry games and try to make that be something special. You're trying to, you know, big win a big national TV game against an opponent you don't play often, uh, and, and and hang your hat on that being what what is special about the season. Yeah, but that's it. That's that's no, all it's I'm become. I don't think that's good for the sport. And that is not because I'm not a fan of one of these teams or either of these teams. It it is it is simply that I, I like I'm I am an NBA fan. I am a Celtics fan. I'm a Boston guy. My Celtics are one of the super teams. I still yeah. think it's bad for the league. Like, oh, it is. Like they're talking about getting Anthony Davis. Like I don't think that's good for the NBA. No, uh, because you're, it, you're it, gonna have you, four you know, relevant teams, and yeah. that's it. You've got four teams. Like, it, it's the Warriors right now and, like, the Raptors and the Celtics, I guess. And the Raptors, we don't even know if they're going to hang around. But either way, off, the, it. off NBA. But we're, we're, like, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. It's, it's predictable. And You it's, know it's going to be Alabama, Ohio State, which – Oklahoma, even, Clemson. Even Ohio State and Oklahoma can't seem to get there That's every right. year. That's right. Which is – I mean, at Ohio State, even when they do make it to the college football playoff – like, they haven't scored. No, I mean, they, they, they won the first they one. They won the first one. But then since then, I mean, they've gotten shut out. They, like, it's just. But, like, hang on. Let's time out for a minute. You literally just blah, they blah over, well, they won the first national championship, and since then they've done nothing. Like, winning a national championship is something that used to happen once every 20 years for a school Gary. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm not saying I'm not saying that's not impressive. And the fact that they won one. And this is a team I hate. So you're making me talk good about Urban Meyer and, and well, no, Ohio but State. Like, Oregon like, was in that one they, too. They won one. And they, Florida they State. They freaking won it. It's only been 4 years. 
they've only made one other playoff. They they can't keep getting back there. That's why I'm saying it's impressive what Alabama and Clemson are doing because all one the, loss in the wrong are, spot. All the rules are set. No, <laughs> the one loss in the wrong spot. Alabama's had that one loss and, and so still Clemson. got there. And so, and so, so Clemson. is Clemson and still got there. It's because other teams keep losing. Like, so that's, at some that's point, just not true. At some point over the last four seasons, Somebody should have been able to knock these guys off other than each other. Why 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 should somebody have been able to do that? Because, because they history are, on, dictates whoa, whoa. They, history they already says, they already have the best players. Then this year they're gonna get all this the more best players. And they already have the biggest budgets and the biggest coaching budgets and the best coaches. And and they're not losing those coaches. And if they do lose a coach, nobody's really worried about the guy they lost. So, no, so why why should somebody else have taken their place, Gary? You can't win without talent. But, but you, no, get no, the, no. you get the I, best I get the talent point. over and over and over again. How the hell hard is it to win when you've got it, all the best players? It sets you up to keep winning. I understand that. But that's what I'm saying. Georgia, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Michigan, all these teams. Well, Georgia's been continue, only doing it for two years. They they had top five, top ten classes every year under Rick. Every uh, year. No, so, go back and look. I, because top I, five, I, I, don't, I, will, I will challenge you on that. Okay, show, we me, can, show me Rick's top five classes we, in we the We will last go through decade. I'll put that in the comments, by the way. And, and you leave your opinion on this in the comments. Tell us what because you think there's about a, this. Because there's a massive difference between top two, three, top, top five, and top ten. There's a massive difference in talent on that. Agreed. And, and, and it's all LSU, my team. LSU is a number four recruiting class, or top five recruiting class in the SEC right now, in, in the nation right now. Which they're, is also top on, five in the hang on, SEC. Hang on. Yeah. They're, they're fourth in the SEC. They're third in the West. Yeah. What the hell does that help? Oh, they're a top five class. But it doesn't matter because they're not the people they have to play against are all better than them. They're and they're better than them now, but remember, and they're getting the kids for tomorrow to be better than them. Recruits don't always pan out. Like, you know, that's the case. And it's about how you develop them, how you – not every five-star ends up being an NFL lottery pick, right? But when you're like, three deep at five-star at every position, Gary, it doesn't matter if one doesn't pan out. I I understand. But LSU – You literally, you literally guys, don't – you just don't get it. No, I do you, get it. The rules are set up to where if you're good, you're always going to be good. Ohio and State, other not, than this season, Ohio State has been a to... top five recruiting class every year. Why were they not able to do the exact same thing that Clemson and Alabama have been able to do? You can't speak to that. See, Ur- that's, maybe that's Urban Meyer isn't as good as we think he is. No, I, and I still think he's fine. I think he's he plays in. I'm not going to say that it's a better league than, or a better division than the SEC, but. I, I don't know how to make sense of it. I think that what Saban and Dabo are doing is extraordinarily um, uncommon. How's that? Okay. Because this is not normal. It is, it's impressive to me. It may not be impressive to you. It is definitely not the norm. This is not what happens. Like, you can have ch- – Nebraska would be dominant for a few years. USC, dominant for a few years. These – same two teams at the same time for four straight years, that is, that's other level kind of stuff. And I understand because there's the recruiting back networks and all this, like Clemson's had that set up since the 80s. Auburn's got it set up. Oklahoma's got it set up. Texas, like it takes the right guy being in charge for all of it to actually pan out, right? So... Either way, let's get into the game because we <laughs> we went way off way off kilter on that one. Uh, it's minus six, Alabama, opening line. The over under is fifty nine and a half. Clemson has won has gone over six times and under seven times. Alabama has gone over nine times and under five times. Let's dig into a few of the numbers. Points per game, Alabama 47.7. That's number two in the country. Clemson 44.3. That's number four in the country. Defensive points per game, Clemson 12.9. That is number two in the country. Alabama 16.2. That's number seven. Yards per play, Alabama 7.89. That's second, only behind Oklahoma. 
Clemson 7.33, that's number three, right behind Alabama. Defensive yards per play. Clemson's number one in the country. 4.05 yards per play. Alabama's number 15. 4.70. Turnover margin, Alabama plus eight. Clemson plus five. Uh, That's number 18 and number 32, respectively. Uh, Strength of schedule, Alabama is number two. Clemson is number 12, which I, I... Wonder if maybe some of the numbers are built around that. Uh, offensive rushing yards per attempt, Clemson 6.7 is number one in the country. Alabama 5.3, that's number 18. Defensive rushing yards per attempt, 2.4 for Clemson. That's number one in the country. Alabama 3.47, that's number 18. Offensive passing yards per attempt, 8.1 for Clemson, number 27. 11.3 for Bama, that's number one. And defensive passing yards per attempt, 6.2 for Clemson, that's number 21 in the country, 6.1 for Alabama, that's number 19. Uh, Clemson can run the ball and stop the run. Uh, I'll go on to give you my pick. The metrics say Alabama uh, minus like three. And not all of the, the different things have been put together because I'm doing this on Monday morning. Um, but I'm going to take Clemson with the points here. I'm taking Clemson with the points. So, and, and I wonder. It's too many. It's just, it's, it's six just is too just too, and I think a lot of it has to do with. I took, like, like I said, I already took it already. Yeah, Alabama is the uh, it, its name, right? It's it's the big name. Uh, I think I am so curious about the TV ratings on this. Like I know this has nothing to do with the game, but I wonder what the interest is nationally in a fourth consecutive. It will be a great game if they were wearing different jerseys and we could hear them talk about different – because so much of watching a football game is hearing them talk about the teams, okay? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And, and all of the background on the teams and the coaches and all this stuff. Being a being a Pats fan, after the last – I mean, they've been to nine Super Bowls in, in, in my in, – in, in, well, I guess in the last 17, 18 years. And now – I don't watch the pregame stuff nearly as much as I used to. Yeah. Why? Because they're talking about the same coaches. Because while the coordinators change quite a bit, all the, about all the rest the is 20 all, years. But, but all the rest of the guys around Belichick, yeah. they've all been there. And yeah. they've been there for a long time. Like the, the OC and the DC that come and go, those guys don't take coaches with them. Um, and so it's I, I know the background. I know all of the story behind all these guys. It's the exact same thing here. I'm going to be interested in the fact that they're really good teams. And this should be a great matchup. Outside of the play on the field, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to need to hear anyone talk about anything about either of these teams because we know everything about them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to just rehash the same things that they've said the last couple of years. Yeah. I mean, and obviously you got Trevor Lawrence this year. You got Tua. Like both are our first time starters this season. But we've heard about them all. But we've season. heard about them for forever, even when they were high school uh, seniors. Like it's, it, we knew where they were going, and we already knew all about them. I mean, before Tua even stepped foot on campus, I was telling you that he was going to be the starting quarterback. Like that's been what three seasons ago, two seasons ago. Uh, I mean, we we already know everything about these teams, which I wonder if it is. We we've heard of Bama fatigue. I wonder how much of Clemson fatigue there is. I'm sure and, there's plenty. Like I said, and so college so going football to the fans games. are made up of 130 teams. Yeah, and yeah. and we have two pumped down our throat every year at this time. This is the first year that we have had the college football playoff national championship in uh, the Bay Area, right? So it's in San Jose, right outside. So of now San you're Francisco. asking these two teams from the South. To fly all the way to San Francisco. That's what I'm. That's it. so. At least so. Alabama for in the their Orange fourth Bowl, national championship in yeah. four years. In the Orange Bowl, Alabama hasn't played Oklahoma in, in several years. They played them in the Sugar Bowl, but you know, different stakes, different whatever. Um, but in Miami or in in just Florida, period. Yeah. Alabama's alumni base is pretty deep, so that that's why they were seventy thirty Alabama to Oklahoma fans there. Uh, it's not always the case. With that, like even if you go to Atlanta, it's going to be like 70-30 Georgia. You know, it's it's whatever. Um, in Dallas, it was 70-30 Notre Dame fans. Like, and this is this was data compiled by Vivid Seats and yeah. StubHub and whatever. 
I had I don't know what the alumni base is for Clemson or Alabama in San Francisco. I'm gonna bet it's pretty small. So I'm wondering if they've just got a bunch of empty seats, and I don't know that the numbers are. I mean, it's a Monday night football game. Obviously, the numbers are always going to be, you know, 16, 17 million. Oh, it'll be a massive number on TV. But, but last year, Alabama, Georgia was 30 something million because of how good the game was. So I wonder if it was somehow Oklahoma, Notre Dame. Or if it won. was Alabama, Notre Dame. Nope. Or, no, or, I'll see that again. I'm telling you. Yeah, if you probably, Oklahoma and Notre Dame had pulled off upsets, I would say that this would have been one of the biggest rated national championships you could have ever gotten because you yeah. got two fresh teams that we haven't seen in there in a long, long time. They just beat two powerhouses, the two bullies on the block, and and they both have extremely large national fan bases. Yeah. No, you're right. And I mean, Notre Dame would sell the thing out because, I mean, they've played like five times in the state of California this year. I mean, yeah. it, they got fans out there. Oh, they got fans everywhere. Um, so it, it's just one of those things where, you know, the number will be big because it's Monday night football and it's a national championship and it should be a great game. I don't know that the story is interesting to anybody. No, and I don't know how many I, – my grandmother will be there. Like, she goes to every national championship game, every Alabama game, whatever. Uh, but she told me at Christmas that, hey, like if we win Saturday, I'm – I'm flying out next Friday. I said, good gracious. Like, are you sure you want to go all the way out there? That's a long flight and everything else. But I will admit this. It's a beautiful place out there. Like, it's a, there's a lot of concrete. But but the area, like Palo Alto, all that, because you're you're 15 minutes from Stanford yep. out there. And Levi Stadium is, so I, I went and visited Levi Stadium last summer. Beautiful place. Great stadium. Looks awesome. Don't know how many people are going to care enough to go. That's an expensive ticket. That is a long plane flight. After you've been buying them for the last decade. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, four straight years playing the same team. I don't know how much people care. College football, we got to fix something. Faux show. All right, that's our, uh, that's our Alabama-Clemson preview.